New, new black Wall Street book club. Evan Jefferson, brother, much love. Educating, elevating, because in knowledge is the power and we'll never give it up. <laughs> Literature is for the masses. Where to put your money down the how to watch your assets. Yeah, uplifting others is a passion. My brother Evan, he will turn it into action. New black Wall Street book club. You should come read with come us. Read with us. Yeah, we comprehend and discuss. Yeah. If we all just come together, there's no limit for there's us. No limit for us. Huh. Here comes your host, New Black Wall Street. Evan, take it away. New Black Wall Street Book Club. <laughs> Black Wall Street Book Club. All right, good evening to you, beautiful people. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight on the New Black Wall Street Book Club, where black folk do read. You put in a book like The University of Success. Right, the greatest self-help author in the world presents the ultimate success book, and we absolutely will find it. I'm your host, ERGJ, your certified global financial educator, CEO of ERGJ Enterprises, The Black Bazaar, an international best-selling author of the book, The Black Billionaires Club. The book that I wrote, guys, is a study of black wealth. It's a study of the 12 richest black people in the world today and how they built their wealth. And I just truly believe that if you want to be wealthy, that's a big if, by the way. But if you do, I recommend that you study wealthy people. You can find that uh, book by simply going to the website, theblackbillionairesclub.com, theblackbillionairesclub.com. You can pick up your copy, and while you're there, you'll find a tab that says uh, the store. You'll find other financial literacy books written by black authors. And you'll also find a tab that says join the club. You can simply decide to walk away from the crowd of broke, busted, and disgusted and get with the few, the few brothers and sisters who are serious about building wealth, serious about building a building business and super serious about building themselves. So check us out at the Black Billionaires Club at theblackbillionairesclub.com, theblackbillionairesclub.com. It's roll call time, beautiful people here on this evening. Uh, let, us know who, let us go and know who is connecting with us here tonight. Uh, go to the, what city, what state you're, you're, you're representing or country you're representing here tonight. What city, what state, what country uh, you're representing here tonight. Hit the like button, the share button if you care. Like button, the share button if you care. And then also make sure that you're following us over at BBC TV. That's Black BC TV over on Facebook. That's where we'll be doing our future broadcast coming next week. Want to make sure that you guys knew where we'll be moving to, moving this broadcast to, okay? Let's find out who's joining us here tonight, man, as we get into this thing. Hey? Debbie O'Shaughnessy is in the house. Good evening to you. BBC is representing here tonight. Shiro is in the building. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight on the New Black Wall Street Book Club. Wilfredo out of Los Angeles, California. Brother Wilhelm Watt has joined us as well. Good evening to you. Leia Love out of New Jersey is in the building. Thanks so much for joining us. Peace Sizzle is in the house out of Decatur, Georgia as well. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight on the New Black Wall Street. Miss Nita Diane is joining us out of Albany. Mableton, Georgia is representing as well here tonight on the New Black Wall Street. Miss Yvette Goodrich is in the building as well here tonight on the New Black Wall Street as we're going to continue our journey into the University of Success. That's right, the University of Success. Now, let me let you guys know this. I, I think I've decided at 9.30, we're going to move it back to 9.30. I think we can get it in at 9.30. So moving forward, we'll do 9.30 p.m., right, Sunday through Thursday, 9.30 p.m., so we can get to bed a little bit sooner as we uh, dive into some good, healthy, mental, mental food for the soul. We're going to call this edition of the New Black Wall Street Book Club. We're going to call this After Dark, okay? We're going to call this New Black Wall Street Book Club After Dark. Everybody put in the comments, so After Dark. That's what we're going to do after, A-F-T-A, -A, After Dark. You know, got to put a little hood in it. Got to put a little hood in it. It ain't no fun and my homies can't have none. After Dark, go put a doula in the house, man. Queen out of, uh, is here as well, out of o o Ohio, I believe. Baltimore is representing as well. After Dark, our New Black Wall Street Book Club, After Dark. What's going on, Tyrese is in the house over at uh, Instagram as well. Now, we picked up, uh, we started yesterday with our forward, which kind of got us prepared. And again, this is a uh, a book that's written as a, as a class, as a course. I think 50 lessons. We may not go through all of them, all, each lesson uh, per day, so I'm allotting about, uh, about uh, 12 weeks, which will be 60 days uh, for us to kind of get through this book. So basically 60 days to get through this book. So we started with day one yesterday, which was the forward. We're going to get into the uh, lesson number one today. Lesson number one today as we get into semester one. So let's far, first uh, talk about the semester. I just got a quote from Charles Spurgeon who says this, beware of no one more than yourself. We carry our worst enemies within us. Beware of no one more than of yourself. We carry our worst enemies within us. How many guys have found that the, very, your, the, the worst enemy that you have found has been the man or the woman in the mirror? 
Beware of no one more than of yourself. We carry our worst enemies within us. And so let's get into today, let's get into lesson one from the University of Success, lesson one, New Black Wall Street Book Club. Let's read. Now, okay, let me set, set this up. So again, uh, for those that are watching, you, uh, if you don't have your own notes, use the uh, use the chat as your notes to kind of get some stuff in your fingers going so that it'd be like your memory would be through your fingers, okay? I guess we dive into deep. He, the, the author shared with us yesterday, hey, you have a pen and paper, grab as much as you can, eat it one bite at a time, and then uh, let our subconscious work for us as we uh, you know, prepare for bed. So that's why we're doing it at night. So anyway, New Black Wall Street Book Club, let's read. Lesson one. So it starts with a quote. In order to plan your future wisely, it is necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. I'll read that again. In order to plan your future wisely, it is important, it is necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. In order to plan your future wisely, it is necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. Now, those are those two words, understand and appreciate where you come from. Understand and appreciate where you've been. Understand and appreciate. Put those two words in the comments below. Understand and appreciate. Appreciate what you've gone through. Appreciate what you've come through. Appreciate what you've overcome. Appreciate what you have experienced and understand it. What has it taught you? Lesson one is a Joe Coderre. Coderre, C-O-U-D-E-R-T. I think that's a French name, Coderre. And lesson one is how to look back on where you have been how to look back on where you have been. University of Success, lesson one. Let's get it. Are you ready to take the first step towards a better life? If you are, I sincerely hope that two sentences from the welcoming chapter are still ringing in your head. No one else can live your life for you. No one else can succeed for you. As Joe Coderre wrote in her marvelous classic, Advice from a Failure, from which this opening lesson is taken, it is not an easy world to live in. It is not an easy world to be decent in. It's not an easy world to understand oneself in, nor uh, to like oneself in, but it must be lived in. And in the living, there is one person you absolutely, absolutely have to be with. There's one person you absolutely have to be with. So you might want to write that name down, Joe Coderre, that's J O. C-O-U-D-E-R-T, Joe Coderre is where this lesson number one is coming from, advice from a failure. That person, of course, is you. But who are you? Why, what are you? How sad that most of us know more about how and why our automobile functions than we know about ourselves. If someone asked you, for example, what business you are in, you might respond that you're a salesperson, a computer operator, a model, a stockbroker, a truck driver, a carpenter, or whatever your vocation may be. You would be wrong. The business you are in, the business we're all in, is the business of living. And the sooner you learn who you are and how you became the person you are, the sooner you will be able to deal with challenges that may have frustrated your success up to now. So let us hasten to begin. I repeat that again. Everybody put a console the business of living. You and I are in the business of living. And the sooner you learn who you are and how you became the person you are, the sooner you will be able to deal with challenges that may have frustrated your success up to now. So let us hasten to begin. I call him X because when his story starts, X was a victim of total amnesia. He did not remember his name, nor his previous life, nor how he had gotten where he was. The best guess was that he had been a flyer and there had been an accident. When he came to, he seemed to be in a dark cave. And apparently there were no broken bones because he could move his limbs, but his brain was barely functioning and he soon slipped back into unconsciousness. How long he remained in the cave, he had no idea. Weak and helpless, he dozed, moved a little, dozed again. Since he, was warm, he, since he was warm, not hungry, and perfectly comfortable, he had no effort to rouse himself. He was content to let things be as they are. But paradise is lost as well as gained. 
And one day he woke to find himself being hauled unceremoniously into the light. Anxiety flooded through him and he screamed in terror. For the first time since the accident, he feared for his life. It was a primitive, consuming fear that washed through every cell, every capillary. Coming out of darkness, his brain was seared with glare and his eyes blinded. Sounds beat at his ears. Cold penetrated every pore. For he, all he knew, the natives who had yanked him from his hiding place had yanked him into hell. Apparently, though, they did not intend to kill him. They covered him and laid him down and exhausted X fell asleep. He slept most of the next days and weeks. He was too weak to even lift his head. All his energy was concentrated inward on the effort to stay alive. Unable to speak and at the mercy of the natives for his every need, he called out when he woke, cried helplessly when no one came. This may not seem very admirable behavior, but, but put yourself in his shoes. He was feeble and helpless. He, had surrounded, he was surrounded by strangers whose ways and intentions he did not know. His mind was barely working. His eyes scarcely saw. He knew little beyond that he was alive and totally dependent. But gradually, his panic became, began to subside. His mind emerged fitfully from his ha its haze. As he gained a little strength, his attention flickered outward for brief moments, and he tried to gather some clues as to where he was and whether the natives were friendly. He noticed that apparently one native in particular had been deputized to look after him, and that is what usually and that is what and that it was usually she who came when he needed something. Although occasionally it was her assistant, a man. Since she was gentle enough in handling him and even seemed to be rather fond of him, he began to feel somewhat reassured about his situation. His longing for the serenity and simplicity of the cave did not end, but it grew less intense. His new environment more and more engaged his attention. As he, had, as he had one success, which encouraged him to believe he might be able to learn to get along. He noticed a woman smiling at him and he smiled back. This seemed to delight her and she called other natives to come see. He obligingly smiled at them, figuring that th if this was what they wanted, this was what he would do. As the time went on, X gained strength. But it was a slow business, and he still, did, he still did little but sleep. In his waking moments, lying on his back and looking at the ceiling, he speculated about what kind of place he had landed in and what sort of people he, he would encounter when he was able to be up and around. He took it for granted that the woman who cared for him was typical of the natives. So he stored up every clue he could glean from her behavior. He listened to her tone of voice for hints as to whether she was happy or discontent. He noted how she handled him so as to guess whether she might he must be prepared to deal with a hostile people or a peaceful, a peaceful one. He counted how long it was after he signaled he was hungry before she came with food. So he would know whether later he would be able to he would have to battle for sustenance or would obtain what he needed quite readily. He eavesdropped on the talk around him, although he could not understand the language to learn whether this was a place where the people quarreled a good deal among themselves or whether they got along equably and enjoyed each other's company. He watched the woman's expression as she tended to his needs to find out whether they were a, purit were a puritanical or a natural people. Knowing that his life depended on whether or not the people would accept him once he was able to move 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 about them about move about among them, he was most intensely interested in what the woman thought of him. He evaluated her behavior for clues as to whether he would be liked, whether he would be found personable and attractive, whether he would elicit sympathy and interest or be ignored. So preoccupied was he with this that he began to find acceptable in himself anything that she found acceptable and to dislike anything about himself that she disliked. Without realizing it, he came to use her as a mirror to reflect back at what sort of person he was. Being so dependent on her, when she went away, he wondered desperately if she would ever return. Some of the early anxiety flooded back when he feared she, was, she had deserted him. He had so much of her attention that it took a long time for him to realize that she was a person with, with a life of her own, that her life did not center exclusively on his that they were two different people. He viewed her at first just as an extension of himself, the legs that could fetch for him, the arms that could bring things to his mouth. His weakness had made him terribly self-centered as people who are ill are self-centered. Being together so much, a closest grew between X and the woman.
They developed a language of their own of signs and sounds. She had always been empathetic to his needs, but now he began to understand her better, to know her moods and read her expressions. They laughed quite a bit sometimes, and sometimes they were just quiet together. They played small games and they teased each other. Once they were, when they were playing, he nipped her to show his increasing strength. He was, start, he, he was startled when she pulled back and frowned and spoke sharply. He had not meant to hurt her. He decided it meant that the natives did not like aggressive behavior and that he had best keep an, any, any, any impulses in that direction under wraps. With the man, whom he was also among to like and trust as, and as he saw more of him, he could play more roughly. And he enjoyed this because it gave him needed exercise. From them both, he learned how the love was expressed in this culture. And he tried to imitate them. For he realized that if he, their loving behavior that meant the difference between life and death for him. If he could not make these people who knew him most intimately care about him, he would have to expect little goodwill from the other inhabitants. And so he was alert to any clues and he tried hard to please them. So hopefully by now you're you're pick, you're, you're catching the drift, right? If you're catching the drift, go ahead and put it in that guys. I'm catching the drift. You catch you see where we're going with this. Anyway, let's keep going. I want to spoil it for anybody. It was clear by now that both that both both now both that he would survive and that he would be spending a long time among these people so x said about learning the language this had both welcome and unwelcome consequences the increased ease in communicating was satisfying but he had a sense of loss that the direct wordless communication between himself and the woman was gone he was nostalgic for for that he had been nostalgic for the cave, and as he had, as he was to be four other warm closest, as he grew more competent and better able to look after himself, but he knew he would not remain helpless and dependent always. The woman knew it too, and she began to point out his responsibility for keeping himself clean. For the first time since he had been with them, X found that he had the upper hand, that he could choose to comply or not. There was some pleasure in testing out this area of auto autonomy, and a battle of wills seemed to be in the all thing. But the woman made an effort to remain good humored and relaxed, and X, valuing her affection and approval, decided to do his best to meet her wishes. It is not surprising that, with X becoming more of a person, one of his first acts as a person was to fall in love with the woman. He asked her to marry him, but she pointed out that she pointed out that not only did he still need a long period of care before he would be able to be on his own, but that she was already married to the man. He considered the first objection no more of a drawback than does the patient who decides to marry his nurse. As for the second, he settled on a straightforward approach. He told the man he planned to marry the woman and that he would appreciate it if he did not come to the house anymore. The man laughed and went right on returning each evening, brooding on the problem of, and wondering if he would have to resort to violent means to get the man out of the way, X considered the possibilities. A most unexpected realization was that the man, being far more powerful and perhaps able to divine his intentions, would strike first and render X impotent to make, take his place. This threat of castration, although existing entirely in X's mind, so frightened him that he abandoned any plan to take the man's place. Indeed, he went somewhat to the opposite extreme, on the theory that if you cannot beat them, join them. He set about identifying with the man and attempted to become more like him. This episode ended up with him becoming good friends and joint admirers of the woman. Now, how many of you guys have been in this position as you think about what we're hearing here, as you are uh, getting, uh, 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 getting acquainted with this thing we call the world, and obviously uh, you being X the man or X the woman, uh, the little girl or X the little boy, growing up in that uh, household with mom and dad, right? Mom and dad having their influence on you, and you are figuring out this thing called life at an early age. X had been with them for about four years at the time of this, uh, of this contra temps. And he learned from it that he had been, that it had, X had been with them for about four years at the time of this contra temps. And he learned from it that he had best began to widen his horizons. Accordingly, he began to venture farther from the woman's side. Initially, of course, he had not been able to walk at all. But as his muscles strengthened, he had tried short steps with the woman's help, and now he was walking fairly well without her aid. He sallied forth to see something of the village, but still stayed close enough to call for help if he needed it. He became acquainted with the natives in their surrounding houses, observed their moors, increased his vocabulary, and acquired some new skills. As far as he could see, he had been right to assume the woman was typical of the other inhabitants, and he confirmed many of the conclusions that he had drawn 
when he had only her to go on. One of the most pleasing ones was that other people also found him attractive and likable. And this gave him a happy confidence in himself. He made friends easily with the natives. They liked his smile and his sturdiness. They approved of his efforts to learn and to master the world he found himself in. Each success gave him courage. Everybody put in console, each success gives me courage. Each success gave him courage. Each success gave him courage. So each success gave him courage to try for further success. And the man and woman had taught him well enough so that when he had failed, he learned from it and went on. It was satisfying to X to be increasingly self-reliant. Everybody put in console, self-reliant. After his long period of helplessness and because his problems were few, it was tranquil time. His keepers were proud that he was learning the ropes and they did not try to hold him back, but they were there when he exceeded his strength or his capability, capacities. And thus he had the best of both independence and, and dependence. The culture was not simple, was not the simple one X had expected. He, intent, he tended to, to at first to make easy generalizations about people and their life, but eventually he became able to accept complexity and contradiction. He stopped looking solely for answers and became interested in the questions. Listen to that. He stopped looking solely for answers and became interested in the questions. He realized that it was more useful to draw inferences than conclusions. He became an avid collector of facts. Let me read that again. The culture was not simple one X, the not the simple one X had expected. He tended at first to make easy generalizations about the people in their life, but eventually he became able to accept complexity and contradiction. He stopped looking solely for answers and became interested in the questions. He realized that it was more useful. It was more useful to draw inferences than conclusions. Everybody put in comments, oh, more useful. It was more useful to draw inferences than conclusions. He became an avid collector of facts, not opinions. He became an avid collector of facts, not just opinions. And so time passed. And X got along very well. If you remember the very early time at all, it was only on the rare occasions when something threatened to go wrong and some of the anxiety came seeping back. Having learned so much in the 12 years he had been there, X began to feel that he had learned everything. And he was, and he was startled to discover that the woman and man who had once seemed to him to be omniscient really did not know much after all. It was clear that he had grown beyond them. And they, and they had outlived their usefulness for him. He found his strength and his enthusiasm, not in them now, but in friends. His friends understood him. His friends understood his moodiness. His friends rapidly, uh, his rapidly changing interests and his concerns and his impatience. He felt guilty that he was turning his back on the man and woman who had saved his life. But he told himself that he had not, that he had not, he had not asked them to bring him into this world. As tranquil and as, the, as as tranquil as the previous time had been, this one was stormy. It was not until after it was over and he looked back on it that X knew it had it had had to be this way. The stirrings within him and uh, that had given rise to his rebelliousness were the promptings of knowledge that he must turn outward, must leave this home, must wean himself from this woman and this man if he were to ever find who he really was and where he belonged. It had been a trial time of selling while he's tried he still tied while while still tied to the dock. His old gratitude to the man and the woman came back. He saw that they were wise, and when not wise, they were generous. He saw that they had done their best and they loved him. He saw that he loved them and it did not lessen him to but enrich him. They had sheltered him for 21 years, and now they knew they must let him go. Their job was over. It was up to him now to find his own people. Everybody put in comments, so find your own people. X never did anything harder in life than to leave them. And this is lesson one. So I know this is a pretty long lesson, but I want you to conjure up some thoughts that you might have had as you were journeying through, journeying with X through his development and growth, as you also at one time went through your journey of development and growth. How was your relationship with your parents? 
Did you kind of see some of the things that X might have saw as he was growing and now he's getting older and older and he's starting to recognize things and this is life and realize that what he thought is not what it is and all this good stuff as well? What are some thoughts that came to you as you were listening to X grow up as you too at one time had to go through the process of growing up? I want to read this last part again, these last two paragraphs. This again is to conjure up some thoughts that you might have as you're now thinking about your early childhood, right? To know where you have been, right? Now, some of this you might not share publicly. That's okay. But some may. How to look back on where you have been. Where have you been is the question I'm asking you right now as you think about your early childhood. Some may be able to answer this question. Some may not. That's okay. But let's go about this again. And so time had passed and X got along very well. If you remember the the early time at all, it was only on the rare occasions when something threatened to go wrong and some of the anxiety came seeping back. Having learned so much in the 12 years he had been there, X began to feel that he had learned everything. And he was startled to discover that the woman and man who had once seemed to be be omniscient really did not know much after all. It was clear that he had grown beyond them. How many guys have had that feeling where you grew beyond your parents? And they had out and they had outlived their usefulness. How many of you guys have felt that before? That they're not useful to me anymore. He found the strength in his enthusiasm, not in them, but in his friends. Now you start to develop these friends, these like-minded people. His friends understood him. His friends understood his moodiness. His friends rapidly uh, understood his rapidly changing interests, his, his concerns, his impatience. His friends. His friends understood him. He felt guilty that he was turning his back on the man and woman or on his parents who had saved his life, who saved him since the time he came out of the dark place, which would be the womb. But he told himself that he had, that he had not asked them to bring him into this world. As tranquil as the present time had been, this was one, this one was stormy. A time where it's time for you to leave the house. Maybe go to college. I don't know what it is. You turn 21. It's time for you to venture off into the world. Can you guys remember that time for you? When it was time for you to leave the house, leave the nest. It was not until it was until after it was over, as he looked back on it, that X knew it had it had had to be this way. The stirrings within him that had given rise to his rebelliousness were the promptings of knowledge that he must turn outward where the uh, must lead this home, must wean himself from this woman and man if he were ever find out who he really was and where he belonged. I mean, guys, I felt that feeling. I got to get out of here. It's time for me to go figure out life for myself. It had been a trial, uh, a time of selling while still tied on a dock. His old gratitude to the man and woman came back. He saw that they were wise. And when not wise, they were generous. He saw that they had done their best and that they loved him. He saw that he loved them and it did not lessen him, but enrich him. They had sheltered him for 21 years and now they must let him go. Their job was over. It was up to him now to find his own people. X never did anything harder in his life than to leave him. Leave them. How many guys can can recognize that you guys can get with that. Like, yeah, that was probably one of the most difficult times of my life was to leave the home, to leave, to go off to college, to leave, to go start the job, to leave, to go get my own place, to leave, to go get married, to leave the home. How many guys have found that after 21 years, 18 years, 17 years, whatever the case may be, one of the most difficult decisions, one of the most difficult things for you to do in life was to leave your parents. <laughs> Trey Pass says it's even harder uh, as you get older and find out that something you've always believed was right is actually wrong. That's exactly why they say you can't teach old dogs new tricks. That's our 30 minutes, guys. I'd love for you to get uh, get your get your viewpoints and get your perspective in the comments below. Go ahead and share uh, your takeaway from tonight. This is just lesson one. How to look back on where you have been. How to look back on where you have been. Go ahead and share your comments, your thoughts in the comments below as we uh, go ahead and share with you guys our 
uh, our sponsors. I'm simply asking you to ask this question in the comments below. Was this worth your time and why? We're going to do quick little sessions, just kind of get through this thing uh, as we move into uh, lesson number two tomorrow. So somebody said that they can relate. They can relate to this uh, conversation that we're having here tonight. Now, I'll go ahead and let you guys know our sponsors because I know I'm, I talk much faster than you type. Uh, so we'll go ahead and knock that out of the way. These are people uh, who actually believe in what we're doing uh, to bring um, literacy to our community. Uh, and this is a book written uh, not by a black man, but by actually by Og Mandino, one of my favorite authors, the University of Success. Uh, we have the sponsors of Black Bazaar, the Afrocentric Marketplace, specializing in Afrocentric home decor, personal care products, also black art inspired gifts. Check them out at www.theblackbazaar.com. Blackberry Charisma, black woman owned business. Helping you, uh, you specialize in the custom crafts, T-shirts, mugs, all your branding and marketing stuff that you might need uh, so that you remain top of mind. But also she has a pretty dope collection of lingerie for after dark, right? Check her out at www.blackberrycharisma.com. Five Factor Consulting, a black woman owned business to be able to help you to get the credit right. I'll go help you to increase your cash flow and help you to understand how to build wealth strategically. Check her out at www.fivefactorconsulting.com www.fivefactorconsulting.com and Big Sis Media, right? Big Sis Media will be able to help you uh, to bring your bring your brand to 2021, help you with your website, help you with your digital flyers, your commercials, your trailers, all the stuff uh, that we're now using in this digital age. Why don't we go ahead and get you a digital upgrade? Check her out at www.bigsismediagroup.com, www.bigsismediagroup.com. Dot com. Man, let's find out what you guys got to say here, man. Uh, you, uh, you guys are just talking to each other. Uh, I've supposed to been sharing uh, your thoughts from our lesson here today as we uh, look back on where we have been. I uh, see here, man. Brother Trey said, man, be truly ready and prepared uh, to grow. Be truly ready. He said 17 years before he, uh, he had to say goodbye uh, to uh, the parents. And Debbie said, man, yeah, it is nice to look back. Anybody else? It is nice to look back. Man, what kind of thoughts conjured up for you? As you look back, what kind of thoughts conjured up for you as you look back uh, through our lesson number one? Now, we do want uh, you guys to understand, that, again, tomorrow we'll be at 930, okay? We're going to move this thing back to 930. We'll do that Thursday through Sunday, Thursday through, I'm sorry, Sunday through Thursday. We'll be off on Friday and Saturday for our After Dark edition. Uh, also, uh, we'll be coming from the Facebook page, uh, uh, um, Facebook page. Uh, Black uh, BBC TV. Okay, so I'll leave that uh, in the comments below, so you guys can go ahead and like and follow if you want to continue after we once we get into next week. If you want to continue journey along with us in the New Black Wall Street Book Club After Dark series a uh, section, and that's going to be this is going to be a, a sixty day process that is roughly twelve weeks, right? So twelve weeks that's three months uh, of us going through the University of Success. Okay, so I put that in the comments below as well. All right, uh, let's see here, man. Uh, Miss, uh, I got a Facebook user say, yeah, leaving my family was difficult, especially since I was spoiled and was the first in my family to go to college. Okay, fan. all right, fantastic. appreciate that. Liz Garza said, man, we have to look back to learn where we need to grow, uh, grow and our growth. Absolutely. Anybody else want to take your last words here tonight uh, before we get up out of this thing? Uh, as you guys, you know, hopefully again to get that subconscious working as you, uh, you know, as you prepare for bed, that subconscious work working for you while you while you sleeping and dream. I know last night, guys, last night I couldn't sleep. Last night my mind was just, I mean, I was I was resting, but my mind was still kind of active. After yesterday, after we did our our uh, our prologue or whatever, the, you know, the beginning of the book, and so tonight I'm, I'm you know, maybe maybe we're gonna have some thoughts about where we've been. Where we're gonna have some thoughts about our childhood. Maybe we're going to have some thoughts about what we learned and, and how we grew and developed. Maybe we'll have some thoughts about the, you know, the elementary school we went to, the middle school that we went to uh, as we began to develop friends. Maybe we'll have some thoughts about the neighborhood that we were raised and the, the friends that we had there and the games that we played or whatever the case may be. Maybe you have some thoughts about uh, some of those hard lessons that you, you know, you that you learned that you had to get that spanking for or go sit in time out or whatever the case may be. Maybe there'll be some thoughts. As you look back on where you have been. Now, here's the interesting thing. I realize that all of us have had different upbringings. All of us not, may not have had the man in the house or, or may not have had any parents in the house. Some of us may have come through foster or some of us have come through homelessness or some of us have come through all these different places, right? Because all, all, all walks of life are not the same. But I think... I think we'll go back to 
what this quote said in the beginning. In order to plan your future wisely, it is necessary. Everybody put it down so necessary. It is necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. Let me repeat. I'm going to repeat this two more times. I might want to write this down. Hopefully, I'll put this in your notes. In order to plan your future wisely. Now, here's the reason why I think he's saying it like this. Because if I understand where I come from, then I can then I can repeat the things that I did, did well, and I can learn or I can I cannot do the things that I didn't do well. And so, so if I learn from my past, if I understand my past, I stop doing the stupid stuff, and I keep doing the smart stuff. I stop doing the stuff that didn't work and I keep doing the stuff that did that does work. Let me repeat this again. In order to plan your future wisely, it is necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. And here's the last thing that I'll say that I, that's just coming to me. This is going to be really rough. Some of us are still running from our past. I'm going to say that again. I don't know who that's for. Some of us are still running from our past. Some of us have been running for our past for decades. Never wanted to never want to touch it. You know, tried to throw some cover on it. Act like it never happened. Whatever it is, because it could be some traumatic stuff. I don't know what it is. Some of us are still running from our past. And here's what I want to say to you, that person, or those people that are still running from their past. That, 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 that didn't, didn't quite well, don't want to deal with it because it brings some feelings right don't want to don't want to don't want to understand it and don't want and don't appreciate it I want you to understand this you have been through your test because you can then have a testimony if you will deal with your past you'll have a much brighter future. There are people in your future, people in your present, who will be impacted positively, who won't have to go through whatever it is that you may have gone through, or at least they can find someone who understands what they're dealing with now simply because you did experience it. Stop running from your past. Stop running for, from your past. In order to plan your future wisely, it's necessary that you understand and appreciate your past. This is New Black Wall Street Book Club, where Black folk do read. After Dark series, University of Success, 30 minutes a night to keep your mind right. <laughs> I came over that last night. 30 minutes a night to get to keep to get and to keep your mind. Right. I want you beautiful people to remember this. And it takes a village. It starts with us. Let's build as we climb together. We all we got beautiful people. Matter of fact, we all we really need. Thank God. That's more than enough. Until next episode, again, tomorrow will be at 9.30. Until next episode, Mr. DJ, hit the music. New, new, new black, new. It's the new black Wall Street book club. Wall Street. With your host, Evan Jefferson. Evan Jefferson. It's time for us to go. Yeah. Now, you ain't got to leave the computer. But we encourage you to get out there and learn and apply all the things you learn at the new Black Wall Street book club, book club, <laughs> yeah.